Good morning, fellow option traders. This is Jeff, and welcome to the Daily Scan for Thursday, July 2nd, 2015. The announcements yesterday were, eh, yeah, all pretty much in line. Um, I just don't know why there was a pullback uh, later in the morning, but then everything sort of recovered in the afternoon. So, um, well, not totally, but at least it came back a little bit. For today, we have the uh, unemployment report, or the technically called the employment situation, jobless claims, both at 8.30, and then factory orders at 10. And then that's about it. And then on Friday, July 3rd, is the holiday for the markets, and the actual 4th of July holiday, of course, it will be on Saturday. So enjoy your weekend. We're going to try to get out of here a little bit early. I have a lot to cover. So let's move quickly and smartly and not dwell and give too many comments. Over in Asia, uh, mixed Shanghai, nice pop. Nice pop on Shanghai, but everything else, uh, a mixed, I wouldn't even say flat. I would say... Um, definitely divided and in Europe um, for the most part slightly bearish okay uh, let's jump right over here and see what's going on I'm gonna look at a covered call today with you guys um, in our accounts we're doing pretty good so I find out that I'm not completely satisfied with the answer yet so I need to re-ask it a different way uh, supposedly SPX trades um, out of hours so that's why we're getting uh, numbers here but um, that means that options trade because this value over here is based on the value of the options and those are supposed to be real uh, bid ask prices not calculated like you get on the analyze page so I'm not completely satisfied with that yet, but as far as our open is concerned, probably because of the jobs report and maybe a little bit of apprehension about what's going on over in Europe, uh, it's looking kind of flat here. We could peg, we could attach any reason that we want to this. VIX is at 16.09, so it dropped a couple yesterday, which is a big drop for the VIX. Gold. Um, sinking fast here at uh, 1163 oils at 57 dollars uh, it sank a little bit yesterday too the dollar is up a little bit though at 9640 and a dollar 1076 against the euro okay uh, had a good day on Priceline yesterday um, not sure if I'm quite ready to consider exiting that yet. We'll keep an eye on Priceline today. Uh, let's jump over and take a look at the big chart. So yesterday it was, um, you know, I came over here and I looked at what was going on and I'm thinking, well, oh man, I got the, the, the trade itch, you know, and I said to myself, now, Jeff, just cool it everything's going good don't trade for the sake of trading so I took a pass so we still have a PPS up on SPX on the weekly I'm looking today to possibly condorize this July 5th we'll put here see if we can get something up in you know this range up here maybe we'll get a little bit of a move up that will help that look better here it is on the daily um, and we're still waiting to recover some somewhat here so here's this morning action popped up here and then it came down in the afternoon and then it came back up and finished right here okay so that's the big chart all right uh, go back to weekly here on the account, everything status quo. Take a quick look at Priceline on the Analyze tab. Let's take a look at the risk profile. 
here is the current price right here this little hash mark because I'm I have these locked in at those break-evens uh, here we're right here at this hash mark so I'm going to take a picture of this well I'll take a picture of it later uh, so I'm, well no I don't want to get out of price line yet I want to see what's the chart look like yeah we might be coming back down here I'll let this thing mature a little bit more um, time will push this white line up and maybe a little bit of an increase in volatility too and that's what we're looking for um, be nice if it can make you know two or three hundred bucks off of this thing that I would be happy with we're at roughly 120 right now 160 over here <clears throat> This is based on the bid ask of the um, options and these values here that anything that shows up on this is calculated at least in, in off hours. Okay, uh, I said something about taking a look at uh, GM covered call. We're going to do that real quick and then uh, we'll run our scan and get the heck out of here. So here's GM. Uh, this is um, this is a weekly chart over here. We're at 33.04. So watch this red bubble here as we scroll back in time. So oh, right here, oh, it actually kind of dropped off because the high was 41.85 on the in the over the last five years. So we're at 33 right now on an average the low was right here at whatever that is 1872 so we're about 50 percent of the high and the low 50 percentile uh, will it go lower it might but there's um, some reports out there that look promising for GM it's pulled back seriously over the last uh, week or so couple weeks so it might be a buying opportunity as noted here in the stochastic and the MACD on both the weekly and the daily they are in sync that's usually a pretty good sign so what I did was I dinged up on the spreadsheet here a little bit of information will go to the GM covered call tab here so if you buy the stock for 3304 the current yield according to um, thinkorswim is 4.36 percent you can get that on the analyze tab or on the uh, trade tab so you just uh, open up these extra lines here and you get the yield for the with the dividend is 34.36 percent looking at the chart we have a di last dividend was 36 and then a 30 cent dividend and then a 30 cent and a 30 cent and there was a uh, 30 cent 30 so it looks like as though it's been pretty consistent there aren't any dividends back here um, back when it was government motors but now I think uh, the government sold their shares and now we're declaring dividends again <clears throat> so uh, you know I'm, I'm not a I'm not a lover of covered calls but I just thought it would be interesting to take a look at this so the yields 4.36% so if we go out to September, which is after the next dividend is declared, and uh, sell a 36 strike call for first we buy 100 shares, and then we um, sell this 35 uh, this 36 strike call in September for 35 cents, and then we get a dividend on early part of September, and this expires say out of the money or something our cost basis is now thirty two dollars and thirty nine cents remember our low was what twenty is that what it was eighteen seventy two so what we would actually be doing is trying to work ourselves down to that eighteen seventy two and but hope that uh, the stock actually never reaches it and if we get called out well let's keep going down here uh, the, your th three month return on investment which is calculated based on 
your purchase price and then we add up these uh, the dividend and the premium from the call and in three months you have a two percent return on investment so actually what you're doing here because your dividend and your um, strike your premium for selling the call are about equal you're actually doubling your yield for all practical purposes so in theory and it's just in theory you could um, have a return of an on investment of 8% on this annually which puts you into where um, things used to be or where they're supposed to be or where all the financial advisors tell you oh you're gonna make 8% a year you gotta figure that you know some years you make 12 some years you make 5 but you're gonna average 8% well those days are long gone but here you can do it quite possibly so your strike was 36 cents <clears throat> so if you get called out in September glory be you know the stock moves up above 36 you get called out you made 3.61 or um, I'm sorry three dollars and 61 cents times a hundred which is three hundred and sixty one dollars on a pretty safe trade I mean if nothing else you own a hundred shares of GM and you're getting a dividend at least for now dividends are not guaranteed uh, and that would be an 11% gain um, based on your 3304 purchase. So that's mm, not all that bad. And I'm not a big covered call guy, so there you have it. Uh, I will put this spreadsheet up for you guys if you want to take a look at that. I just thought that that would be an interesting thing to take a look at. All right. Um, Let's run through our scan right quick. If uh, think or swim will let us. Okay, Apple's uh, recovering a little bit. Amazon. Uh, I still wouldn't really know what to do with Amazon. Yeah, I might do it like a double calendar or something like that. But or an iron condor, possibly. Uh, Baidu, this uh, channel here is no longer valid, but I'm not going to take it out right now. Let's see if it comes back into it. Chipotle it only came down and tested this uh, butterfly break even here. It's not going to move back into this channel, and it may be in. It may be bottoming out here. We got momentum coming up heading up above the zero line possibly they have earnings coming up though <laughs> yeah I just stay away from that Costco uh, we have something going on Costco don't we yes we do all right Costco um, we're out here oh it's working good for Costco liking the way that this baby's moving take a peek at the dial Uh, let's see here yeah we think that uh, I think the markets overall are um, trying to decide whether they're going to move down or not and if they don't I don't know what they're going to do they're just going to like do nothing I, I have no idea it's all pure speculation and it's all really probabilities nobody can really predict so here we have gold GLD um, Definitely should do something about that covered call next week, but I'll make a note of it today and I'll take a look at it again today. Um, I may roll it today because I'm pretty sure that this. And yeah, where are we at here? We're at uh, five and a half cents. So, um, yeah. So I may do that today. Because I could uh, buy it back for no transaction cost. Let's take a look at Google right quick. I'm trying to get it, get out of here early. It doesn't look like it right now. Uh, Google's just uh, not looking real good either. Uh, LinkedIn. Let's see if it's still suffering here. 
Uh, I think it's just going to run sideways again for a while. Yeah. Not interested in any trades there myself. Um, NDX, the NASDAQ. Actually looking kind of weak. What do we got here? We're still in an up PPS up here, but PPS down here. And um, I would not have gone uh, bullish on this at this hook here would not uh, Netflix I may just take Netflix off of here don't like what they're doing they want more people to buy their stock or they want to issue more stock and get more people to buy it I think that's what they want to do they want more capital uh, the business model phew, uh, I guess there's still a big kid on the block out there. Everybody else is trying. Uh, let's, come on. Priceline. Priceline's coming up. Looking good. And sweet spots here. And we're just a tad above it, as we saw on the risk profile. So uh, we're hoping that we just kind of stay in the top part of this channel and let that thing mature a little bit more. Here we have the Russell. Here we have the Russell. Come on. Alright, uh, here's the rut. Kind of looks like NDX a little bit. And we looked at SPX and then let's go down to Tesla where we have a old put. And it's looking pretty good. So how does that look on this page here, a single here. Let's see, Tesla is up 15 buckaroonies. Okay, well, I think that's all I have for today is doing rolling that gold covered call and condorizing that July 5 bull put on SPX. And that's it for today. Enjoy your long weekend, and we'll talk to you again Monday. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day and happy trading.